This is the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, and we're joined today by the Honorable Kat Kamek. She represents the 3rd Congressional District of Florida, member of the Homeland Security Committee, also House Ag Committee, and it's great to see you. Hey, thank you, Tony. Such a pleasure to be here. And I'd say welcome to Congress, which <laughs> would be appropriate, but it's really, you're not new to to the House, are you? Uh, new as a member, but not new uh, to the institution. I previously served as a Deputy Chief of Staff to uh, a member who served on the House Agriculture Committee for eight years. So uh, the process is not new, but uh, the title sure is. <laughs> you know, that really does give you the opportunity to hit the ground running. Yes. Uh, I think those who are outside of D.C. and have never really seen how things work in Congress there is a steep learning curve, isn't there? Oh, there is absolutely a learning curve. And you know that was something that we campaigned on was the fact that we could hit the ground running. And with all the challenges that we're facing today, we really needed someone who could, on day one, be effective. And I'm really proud of the fact that we were operational on day one. There has not been a learning curve of, hey, where are the bathrooms at, all the way down to, what is a markup? So uh, it, it's been great. I've been able to mentor some of my colleagues that are brand new to Congress, but also to ag. And I think it's a very important that we have our Aggies educating people that aren't necessarily on the ag committee, but understanding the role that ag plays in our everyday life and our national security. And serving on the, the House Ag Committee, obviously, is, is a, a great opportunity but at the same time, it, it means that you have to represent your constituents back home. So let's yeah. go to Florida. Yes. How, how does ag look right now in the state? So ag is the number one economic driver for last year. And typically it, it kind of goes back and forth between tourism and agriculture being the number one economic driver for us. And people think of Sunshine State, they think of Disney, they think of beaches and palm trees, but they don't realize the magnitude of our ag industry in Florida. So not only are we top 10 um, cattle production in the country, but we, have, uh, we are home to the largest cow-calf operation in the country. We, uh, in just South Florida, we feed about 140 million Americans every single year. We have a diverse array of commodities, everything from, of course, oranges, you know, we're known for our orange juice, um, our citrus production, peanuts, watermelons, uh, sweet corn, uh, orchids, cattle, uh, you name it, chicken. I mean, we, timber, dairy, we have an incredible diverse ag base and it is just so incredible to be the voice of agriculture across the state. I, I represent as the lone Republican on the House Ag Committee. And for such a large production state, it's kind of it's kind of shocking. So I have my work cut out for me for sure. <laughs> now, you mentioned, I think dairy, isn't, is this National Dairy Month? <laughs> it is, it is. It seems like these days, every day is a national something month. But uh, something that I am excited about is the fact that it is National Dairy Month. And for me and my district and really our region and our state, we have incredible production. Um, our, we're home to predominantly class one uh, milk producers. And that's exciting because, you know, these are family operations and in some cases, multi-generation family operations. And let's be honest, the, the dairy and milk program, when it comes to talking about that in the farm bill, it can get very complicated. But the short of it is, is that we in Congress have a real role to play in ensuring that our family operations will be able to continue for the next generation and will have an equal and fair playing field in which they can produce. So uh, dairy month is, is important because, you know, we've seen a lot of new products enter the marketplace. You know, I think almond milk is uh, <laughs> is is starting to, to get up there, but I don't think that when it comes to a the production of a safe and efficient and cost-effective product, milk couldn't be any better. So really proud to represent such an incredible dairy men and women across the state of Florida and really the country. We think back to some work that was being done by the U.S. Trade Representative uh, last year in yeah. working a deal with China. 
yeah. and there seemed to be a breakthrough that was was revealed and it involved dairy mm -hmm. and I just wonder how important not necessarily that we're exporting all of our dairy products out of Florida mm -hmm. but it does bring up the the interesting point how important is that port infrastructure because yeah. you do have few ports. Oh, in Florida, we sure do. You know, uh, in Florida alone, we are home to 14 ports, 23 military installations. And one of uh, the ports that I work extensively with is Jack's Port, which is the largest roll on roll off uh, capable port in the uh, eastern seaboard. Now, the thing that's also unique to Jack's Port, it is the furthest western port on the eastern coast. Um, it's actually in line with Ohio. A lot of people don't realize that. And what's interesting is about 45% of the, the, the goods and services or goods that come through the port are actually going out of the port. And that's important for our producers because we as um, Americans produce such an incredibly efficient, safe food supply and a variety of different commodities. It's important that we have markets overseas that we can export to. And uh, so the ports that we have, be it Miami, be it Tampa, uh, Canaveral, Jack's Port, you name it, we are doing everything that we can to make sure that the port infrastructure is there to accommodate these new Supermax uh, ships that are coming through. In the case of Jack's Port, we're dredging down to 47 feet and we are ahead of schedule and under budget, which in government that never happens ever. <laughs> and so the fact that we are, are so far ahead on completion, looking at the end of next year to be able to accommodate these Super Panamax ships um, and then fill them up and send them back out filled of containers with our goods from American producers is something that I'm very excited about. So good to see you again. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks for your service and we wish you the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Again, it's the Honorable Kakanek representing the 3rd Congressional District of Florida on today's Agribusiness Report.